I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this tutorial, I'll share the new features in the October 2021 update of Adobe Photoshop that are relevant to digital artists. I keep thinking selections in Photoshop can't get any easier, and then this comes along. This enhancement to the object selection tool is a game changer, not just for creating YouTube thumbnails, but for editing illustrations as well. For instance, if I happen to flatten all of my layers, but I want to isolate an object, subject, or even part of a subject, I can easily do that just by hovering and clicking, or drawing a box. Holding Shift or Alt can add or subtract areas. These selections may need to be refined, but for the most part, this works really well. It's much faster than using any of the other tools. You can even choose from a hard edge or soft edge, depending on the edge quality you want. I'll use a soft edge. Now that I have a selection, I can use it to edit the colors, for example. Now let's explore some of the new neural filters. I've been enjoying the creative things AI can do to generate reference images, so I'm excited to see that Adobe has added the ability to mix landscapes together. While this is obviously intended for image compositing, I think it can be incredibly useful for generating reference images. It can also be used to get suggestions about what details you could add to a painting to make it look more realistic or complex. For example, I can bring in this image, which was actually inspired by an AI-generated reference I created using Artbreeder. This is my interpretation of an AI-generated image, and now Photoshop AI is going to interpret that. I'll click on this snowy-looking preset, and my scene changes from a sunset beach to an arctic beach, complete with penguins. Next, let's try the bottom sliders, which can make the scene look more like a sunset or season. The result I get is an eerily more realistic version of my image with whatever visual theme I chose to add in. I could use this midway through my painting process to get some ideas for what to add in. I'm excited to try this for some of my own paintings soon. Be sure to subscribe to my art channels if you're interested in that. You can also use this feature to mix two images together, which gives some really fascinating results. As is, the results of AI-generated images look sort of artificial. This might be acceptable for surrealism, but it's too abstract to convince anyone that this is a real photo or painting. Still, there's some inspiration to be found, even in something abstract like this. While I get that this AI stuff feels more like a gimmick than something you can actually use for art, I firmly believe that AI-generated reference images are going to have a major impact on our community. In a few years' time, I envision being able to take a reference image of any object and view it from any angle, while having full control over the lighting, material, and color. Gone will be the days of hunting through tons of useless images on Google search only to settle for one that kind of works. AI will allow artists to get the exact reference image they want. Moving on to the next feature, ever wanted to take the color scheme from one image and transpose it to another? With Adobe's Color Transfer, you can now substitute the colors in one image for another. I haven't found a practical use for this beyond recoloring abstract artwork or images, but I imagine it could be useful for changing the color scheme of graphic design elements like logos and layouts. The next new feature is harmonization, and as someone who's been using Photoshop since some of the earliest versions, Adobe's updates always make me feel bad about how much time and effort I wasted on simple tasks. Thanks, Adobe. One example is trying to match the color from one image to another, like in this example of one of my YouTube thumbnails, where I want to place an image of a person into a painted background that looks much different. In older versions of Photoshop, I'd have to adjust the colors manually until it looked correct, but now I can do that in just a few clicks. I can see this feature being very useful for artists who are compositing reference images together from different sources. Those are all the neural filters I wanted to show you. Next, the oil paint filter has been updated with GPU support and AI enhancements. I'm not a fan of filters like this. They don't look convincing at all. Even with help from AI, it still looks like a photo processed with a filter. If this were focused less on emulating the look of oil paint and more on the process of placing strokes, I bet this could be a lot better. If I zoom into the small strokes, it looks like they layer in an unnatural way. You should be able to see directional marks from the bristles in each stroke, but instead you get these stacks of paint layers or swirls. That's not to mention that not all oil painting strokes are going to have the same depth. For example, some areas may be flat or blended. The AI really should be able to isolate the subjects and blur the background. 
A small but powerful feature in Photoshop is the ability to create gradients that don't look like garbage. I tend to hand paint gradients with the airbrush because the gradient tools do a poor job of creating natural looking color transitions. Depending on the colors you choose, you often end up with a middle color that looks sort of dull or gray. Adobe isn't having any of that, so they added the perceptual and linear modes to their gradient tool. These create transitions in color that are closer to how light really behaves, or how we perceive color with the human eye. I think these are probably implementing HSI and HSY color models, rather than the classic HSL version which is getting stale. Krita and Rebel have been offering better color models for some time, and I'm happy to see Adobe join them. Maybe that will light a fire under some of these other app developers to adopt better color models as well. For those of you who are into NFTs, Adobe has just signaled that NFTs are not going anywhere, and they're not just a fad. Although it's still in beta, the new content credentials feature can be used by artists to authenticate their work. For example, if you wanted to know if an NFT is genuine and not a counterfeit, you can look up the credentials associated with the image you wish to purchase. This feature records some of the high-level edits you made to an image's metadata. It also includes your digital signature linked to your Creative Cloud account and you can link your crypto address through MetaMask and a few other options. This metadata is attached to an image when you export and can be viewed through many of the NFT marketplaces like Rarible and OpenSea. It could be because this is in beta or maybe it's supposed to work this way, but when I open a pre-existing image, this feature does not work. My guess is that this is intentional, otherwise people would be signing other artists' work, defeating the purpose of this tool. Unfortunately, I guess that means you can only authenticate brand new artwork made entirely in Photoshop. As soon as I make edits in Corel Painter, Content Credentials shows an error message. I was hoping this feature would allow me to sign or authenticate my existing artwork, not a copy of it. My recent review of the Pastel Network has a really good solution for authenticating existing artwork if you're interested in learning more about that. That's it for the Adobe Photoshop features. Let's look at one last new feature, and that is found in Adobe Illustrator. According to Adobe, the Photoshop 3D features no longer work on modern computers, so they'll be removing them. But 3D does work in Illustrator? Something about that doesn't add up, but whatever. I guess that's another way of saying that the 3D features in Photoshop are now being moved to Illustrator. It's now incredibly easy to make 3D versions of your vector shapes. You can even modify the lighting and material. I have to say, although it does feel odd to see 3D integrated into a vector application, it's much easier to use this in Illustrator than it was to use in Photoshop. In addition to making your logo 3D, you can also use this to generate 3D objects for art or for reference. That brings us to the end of the new Photoshop features that are relevant for digital artists. There are a few other features for some of the other Creative Cloud applications that could be worth checking out if you do a lot of video editing. I may make a separate video about those. If this is your first time here, this channel is all about helping you create your own path to success in the creator economy. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you subscribe and become a part of this community. Thanks for watching and stay creative.